Are you someone who really looks for that guidance or are you someone who likes to create the plan? Like there are no good and bad in this debate. It is just who you are and what sort of role you were made to do. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one-stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. Well, hello there. I am so excited about this topic today for so many reasons. I feel like my life has really led me to be talking about this idea and this difference between being an employee or an entrepreneur. And especially the last few weeks has really had me thinking about the differences and the pros and cons of both. And honestly, I'm coming at you from Minnesota. I feel like I should say welcome back to myself. We were down in sunny Arizona for the last few weeks. We ended up spending Thanksgiving down there. And usually we fly south somewhere warmer for the winter or a portion of the winter. But because we are going to be moving into our new home in the next few weeks, good Lord willing, we decided to take the trip a little bit earlier because we knew that once our house is done, we're definitely going to want to be in it and getting things settled and unpacked. And so we moved our trip up and it was honestly so amazing. We had so much fun and it was different than I expected. And I think this topic will lean into that a little bit. But when we went down, I was kind of planning on still working normal and just kind of moving our life down there. But when I got down there, I just really got swept up in motherhood and the fresh air that felt so good and family time. And I'm so grateful for my team and for the business that I've created that it allowed me to really disconnect in ways that I hadn't anticipated. And this morning when I sent Coco off to school, we we're getting her boots on and we kind of shared this moment of just like man that was so much fun like we did so many things as a family and and I know I will never regret that time and so getting back into the swing of things feels a little bit unique today because I didn't anticipate being out of the swing of things but we really had an awesome awesome time so let's dive into this topic of employee or entrepreneur which one are you which one is better for you And I first have to start this off with an apology. So I have gotten a few things right in the past, obviously, but I've also gotten some things wrong. And for years and years, I genuinely believed that entrepreneurship was the right path for everyone. Because for me, in my experience, it unlocked this life that is better than I could have even dreamed, like ever dreamed. And the more that I know about entrepreneurship, the more that I evolve and grow as a human and a leader and even as a mother, and the more that I learn about all the different ways that we as humans are wired to show up, I recognize that for some, even for a lot of us, being an employee is the dream. So today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of both and how to distinguish if you're better off as an entrepreneur or an employee. I'm going to talk about the perks also going to share seven signs that you're ready to become an entrepreneur. And I'm going to talk about the one exercise that I did before I left behind the nine to five forever that I think is super transformative. So let's dive on into today's show. And I'm so happy to be back at the mic. Looking for a new show to add to your podcast library? Well, look no further than Being Boss Podcast hosted by Emily Thompson. Being boss is an exploration of not only what it means, but what it takes to be boss as a creative business owner, a freelancer, or a side hustler. Being boss is another amazing resource for anyone interested in getting inspired and more importantly, getting started. I absolutely loved Emily's recent episode all about achieving work-life balance. It's a hot topic for my team as we enter the new year. Emily shares five top tactics for achieving a good work-life flow, whatever that looks like for you. And I totally resonated with how she feels about balance. 
Being Boss is brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. Listen to Being Boss wherever you get your podcasts. Today's episode of the Gold Digger Podcast is brought to you by Nikon. Nikon's new Z30 is the camera creators have been waiting for. Head to NikonUSA.com slash Gold Digger for details. So our trip was amazing for many reasons, but part of the why behind the trip was that months and months and months ago, friends of ours invited us to go to Mexico with them. And we we're kind of trying to figure out what that would look like, especially from a childcare standpoint. And so what we ended up doing is that we flew down to Arizona, spent some time down there, and then we actually flew my parents down and it ended up working out amazingly because my parents were able to spend the weekend with the girls while Drew and I went to Mexico. And then they got to spend an extra week down in the sunshine in Arizona. And so it was like this beautiful way of combining child hair, time with my parents and also a vacation for them. And so while we were in Mexico, we were actually with a lot of different entrepreneurs. And I actually had a conversation with one of the people that we were with. It was an amazing trip. It was so much fun. It was kind of our first like vacation vacation since having kids. I feel like we've been able to travel, but most of our travel is around work things. And so this was like a true vacation. It was so fun, but we were with a bunch of entrepreneurs. So of course, we talked business and different things. But it was really interesting to me because one of the guys that was on the trip, is an employee. He works for someone else and he's worked for them for over a decade. And we were talking one day and I was like, you know, I'm really surprised that you're not an entrepreneur. Like you strike me as super entrepreneurial. You have a lot of ideas. You have a lot of the traits that I see that make an excellent entrepreneur. And yet you're an employee. And we kind of talked about like, why is being an employee the right thing for you? Have you ever thought about entrepreneurship? If you were to become an entrepreneur, what would you do? And it really inspired this topic. And, you know, there are a million reasons why I personally am obsessed with entrepreneurship. Like, I have not set an alarm clock for years. Like, even when we were planning our flight, picking out an alarm tone, like that noise, like all of those tones literally like make my stomach turn. And it's kind of funny because, I mean, my kids wake up at like 5 a.m. anyways. So who needs an alarm clock with children? But I love entrepreneurship. I can make my own schedule. I can work from anywhere that has Wi-Fi and a laptop. I get to travel the world. I get to experiment with new ideas. I get to be in charge of my earning power. Like I personally am so fired up about entrepreneurship. But when I look at my history, like I have been an employee in so many different industries and in so many different ways. Let me list a few of my past jobs. So I worked in the restaurant industry. I was a hostess. I worked at a country club, even though I never golfed a single day in my life. I was like one of the top salespeople. I was the only girl that worked in the pro shop. I could sell basically anything to anyone, but I never golfed. I worked as a limousine cleaner and then became a manager and kind of managed a team of cleaners. I worked at Abercrombie & Fitch. I worked and drove a forklift in a paper mill. I also was a tour guide for a paper mill. <laughs> if anyone goes on a tour of a paper mill, that was a thing. I worked at Target. So I've done a lot of different things. So I've done retail. I've done the restaurant world. I've done managerial positions. I've done a lot of different things. And... What's interesting about my story is that I'm a first generation entrepreneur. Like nobody in my family was an entrepreneur before. I didn't really have examples of entrepreneurs in my life. And I was the first one in my family to go full time into entrepreneurship. It's kind of wild because when I was on the plane yesterday flying home, Quinn is like a crazy woman. Let me go on the record and say that flying with any child that's like from 12 to 24 months, it's the trickiest time. It's totally possible, but oh my gosh. That girl, she is wants to be on the move. And so I was sitting next to this amazing woman who is a grandma. And so she's like, it's okay. I love kids. I'm so excited. And it was a very short flight from Minneapolis to Duluth. And we started talking and we were just talking about how I've been super fortunate to travel with the kids a lot for my work. And we kind of went down all these different rabbit holes before she finally asked me, like, what do you do? And it was so cool to talk about just how I am able to work from basically anywhere that I have my laptop and Wi Fi, and just how fortunate that has been for my family and just how life changing it has been. Like, we have been able to spend so much time together. 
we have been able to travel together and, you know, experience different things and grow like the real estate side of our lives and just all these different things. And it was just so cool because, you know, I asked her kind of what she did and she was retired and all these things. But I think for a lot of people, entrepreneurship looks a certain way or they have this certain vision for it. And I think that this generation of entrepreneurs is kind of introducing this new way, this new model based on what sort of entrepreneur you are. And so, you know, my parents were very traditional in their job paths. My mom became a nurse and then she became a nursing instructor and she had that job for over 30 years. So she started her teaching job when I was born and recently retired. And so, you know, it was a more traditional job. She had traditional hours. And my dad worked at the paper mill. So the paper mill that I drove the forklift and was a tour guide at, my dad worked there and he worked shift work. He worked super hard and he was there for decades. And so I came from this more traditional upbringing where, you know, craving security and safety first was the way. And I really respect that because I feel like, you know, especially in recent years, and I'll talk about this in a bit, but especially in recent years, I've really understood that if you don't have safety and security first, it is so hard to be creative and risk taking and to go and take a leap of faith into something new. And so when I look at my parents, I really see this theme around safety and security in so many ways. And I've recognized how I've taken what they've taught me and pull that into entrepreneurship through different ways. And it's still something that I crave, but I've gone the more non-traditional route to get there. So first, let's start with a few distinctions of like, what is the difference between an entrepreneur and an employee? And I want for you to go into these different bullet points with an open mind, because even as I was typing them out, I was thinking about like how some of these, like some people will be really repelled and attracted to different things, but kind of look at them as just like blank statements, like without a lot of emotion behind them. So first, employees like to see guidance while entrepreneurs like to create the plan. Employees also tend to take less risks, whereas entrepreneurs are generally bigger risk takers. Employees get paid for their role and entrepreneurs get paid for their results. Employees like to follow rules, whereas entrepreneurs tend to break them. And I love that. For me, employees are responsible for some decisions, whereas entrepreneurs are responsible for all. Employees tend to work to a schedule, whereas entrepreneurs make their own. And employees tend to be more social, where entrepreneurs tend to be more siloed. So it's interesting in in reading, even though it's like I have these visceral reactions towards certain things. Like I love that I get paid for my results, not my role. And I like to break rules. Like someone the other day was saying to me, like, you're just like so confident in who you are and what you bring to the table that like you love to just go out and show the world what you can do. Even to the part of like employees work to a schedule, entrepreneurs make their own, like that can be both good and bad based on who you are. And I think that as we enter this conversation, it's so important to really be introspective here on like, who are you? Like, do you love this idea of being responsible for all the things? Or are you someone who just likes to kind of be responsible for your role? And are you someone who really looks for that guidance? Or are you someone who likes to create the plan? Like, there are no good and bad in this debate. It is just who you are and what sort of role you were made to do. And I think that it's such a fascinating thing to look at because as I said, like for years, if you would have stopped me, you would have said, you know, Jenna is entrepreneurship for everyone. And I would have been like, yes, absolutely. Anyone can be an entrepreneur. And it's really interesting because, you know, for me, it's almost like, If the sky was falling and you knew it, would you go out and tell the world? Absolutely. And for me, it was like entrepreneurship unlocked so much for me. It unlocked the fullness of life. And, you know, looking back, even even in this podcast, there have probably been times where I have almost given this ideal of like everyone needs to be an entrepreneur, but that's not the case. And I don't know if it was the pandemic 
and seeing just how essential workers changed and saved lives, or maybe just the acknowledgement that with all the benefits and the pros of entrepreneurship, there are also a lot of stresses and responsibilities that can be too much to handle for some people. Or maybe even just seeing like the role that Drew plays and and like he did entrepreneurship a little bit before he became a stay at home dad and it wasn't necessarily for him. And so it's really interesting because I feel like my eyes have been opened that, you know, a lot of us have probably been questioning over the last few years, like, is entrepreneurship for me? Is it something that I want to do? Is it something that I can do? And I know for me personally, the last few years have really felt like a lot of responsibility. Like I felt the weight of what entrepreneurship is. And I've also seen the evolution of what my entrepreneurship journey has looked like. Like for me, you know, entrepreneurship started as this exit strategy out of a life I didn't want. Like I no longer wanted somebody handing me my five-year plan. I no longer wanted a job where the only way to earn more was to work more. Like there were things that I was walking away from, but I wasn't necessarily running towards entrepreneurship. It was just the solution of the exit that I needed at the time. But when I became a wedding photographer, like I never dreamt that a decade later, I would be responsible for salaries and 401ks. And I'd be figuring out like, how do I give this team paid maternity leaves? And what does that look like? And, you know, how do I support the livelihoods and the families of other people? Like, I never even thought of that. Like, I was just like, how do I get myself out of this? But, you know, entrepreneurship kind of is this rabbit hole, where you start to unlock these different things. And and with these new experiences, you also have more responsibilities, right? And so while I personally would not trade being an entrepreneur for anything, there's a lot to it. Like there's a lot to it. And I can see so clearly now how being an employee is the right move for a lot of people. It is the desired outcome. And for me, when I wrote my book, which was initially handed in as a manuscript about business, I recognized I kind of had this awakening of like, yes, entrepreneurship is the answer for me, but it is not for everyone. And what I love about entrepreneurship for me is the type of life it unlocked. And is that type of life possible for someone who is a caregiver or a stay-at-home parent or someone who works a nine-to-five or a more traditional job? Yes, I believe all of those things. And so I feel like my book was kind of this broadening, this almost like maturity upgrade for myself in that... I love entrepreneurship because it unlocked this life, but I believe this life is possible for other people as well. So what I think is really interesting is that when I started thinking about this topic, when I was having this conversation with that guy in Mexico, when I started looking at my team and the gifts that they have and the traits that they have, I really started to see entrepreneurship isn't for everyone. And in fact, when I was preparing for this episode... I asked my team, I said, you know, if you're willing to, can you chime in on like why you enjoy being an employee? Like, what does that look like for you? And what does that personally feel like for you? And do you have these desires for entrepreneurship or is being an employee something that really fills up your cup right now? Here are a few points that my team made about the perks of being an employee. And I love them. So one of them was not having to think about paying your own taxes out of your earnings as an employee is a benefit. Like there are a lot of financial things that you have to figure out. Like when I became an entrepreneur, I didn't think about like accounting and payroll and taxes and 401ks and all of these things. And so that is something that is a responsibility that's lifted oftentimes as an employee. Another big theme was just financial security. Income is more or less guaranteed as an employee. Again, going back to that safety and security thing. And that's a massive perk. But there's also the downside that it's rarely scalable. So as an employee, oftentimes, you know, there are different glass ceilings in the sense of like what you can earn. Another perk includes benefits like having paid time off. We're going into a season where I give my team all of Christmas all the way through New Year's off. Just it's just a part of what we do. It's a practice. And, you know, that's on top of their other time off. And honestly, my team has somewhat unlimited time off in the sense of we are super flexible. We're not keeping track of the days you're off, but it's just kind of this respect thing and this communication piece. 
And I think that's amazing. And that's a perk for a lot of people, like having that paid time off, having things like retirement and 401ks. We have that for my employees. Healthcare, that can be really expensive as an entrepreneur and a big hurdle to overcome. Other perks include being able to ideate and collab with other brilliant brains who are all driving for the same results in a more intimate way. Like my employees love working together. It's like we have this shared vision and they are the missionaries behind the vision. And together we can make a way bigger impact. Like together we get to do really important work. And so that's a big perk. Another perk is being able to shut down at the end of the day without that weight or responsibility of entrepreneurship, like the pressure of building and maintaining a brand, a product, a reputation like that is not for everyone. And so having more defined boundaries around what you can and need to do versus what you don't have to do as an employee. And lastly, one of my team members, I love her. You've probably talked to her if you've ever emailed us. She said, not everyone wants to or is built to be the center of attention or the life of the party. Some of my team are more wallflowers. And I say that with like deep admiration. They're more observers, happy to work in the background of a part of something that's bigger and more meaningful without the attention and the scrutiny that comes with being the face of a brand or business. And it's interesting, even as I read these things, because even as someone who is obsessed with entrepreneurship, like I see massive benefits in all of those things. Like I think many entrepreneurs can relate that sometimes those types of things sound incredible. Like the idea of closing the office door and walking away without constantly thinking about work. You know, there's a lot of pressure around entrepreneurship. And so it's interesting, even as I read those, because I'm like, oh, yeah, I totally see a lot of benefit in that. You know, it's interesting because as I was speaking to the woman on the plane next to me yesterday, She's kind of asking about my family and different things, what my parents did, what my siblings do. And it's really interesting because me and all of my siblings are now entrepreneurs. And my sister, it's really awesome. She recently had a baby, her first baby. And I've just watched this massive transformation in her own life. And it was really interesting because she has always had the safety and security of a more consistent like 9 to 5 type job. And as an entrepreneur, it always drove me crazy because she always had these incredible side hustles that she built. And I would look at her and be like, Oh my gosh, like Kate, if you were to go all in on this business, like you don't need the nine to five, you don't need the security. And like, for me, I was, it was like such a clear thing where I was like, just go all in. And it was really interesting to see how, even though we always joke that we're like 50% clones, 50% opposites. And how for me, it was like, just go take the leap. But for her, she was like, I just love that safety and security. Like it's something that gives me a lot of peace. It's something that lets me sleep better at night. And it's been interesting because she recently did make the transition into more of like an entrepreneurial role, kind of shifting that side hustle into the main gig. But she did so really thoughtfully and kind of acknowledging that she's wired differently. And she wanted that safety and security for a long time. And so it's been really interesting to watch that transition up close. And it's been amazing because now that she is devoting more time and attention to what was once her side hustle, she's seeing that potential and also seeing the benefits of like, there is something that's so addicting as an entrepreneur to see like when you invest your time and energy and your talent into something, you can watch it grow and you can watch it exponentially grow and you can get those results. But it was really cool to see also just like the thought process behind it and the thoughtfulness and to kind of understand like why she still craved like that consistency of having that nine to five and what that security unlocked for her creatively as well. And so, you know, it's cool because for me, you know, I kind of went all in and I'm going to share about like how I made that transition because, you know, it was a really thoughtful one on my part. But watching someone because I'm a decade removed from that decision, right? Like I'm, I'm out of that stage, but watching someone who I am so close with go through that, it gave me like this thoughtfulness around someone who might be listening to the podcast and being like, Hey, I have this great idea or I have this side hustle or I have this desire, but I also really need that safety and security to feel like I can be creative or go out on a limb or take the leap. 
Trust me when I say I am not the most tech savvy entrepreneur out there. Like you will not hear me saying it's almost too easy when I'm talking about tech because tech usually isn't easy, especially for me. Tech for me is usually too complicated, too busy and too frustrating when it should be just plain easy. Until now, HubSpot CRM platform is ridiculously easy to use, learn, and love. That's because it's a handcrafted, sophisticated system designed for the way teams actually work, not a bunch of cobbled together tools that don't work well together. With a suite of powerful tools that seamlessly connects your teams and customizable hubs that you can add or subtract as you grow, it's not almost too easy to use. It's easy to use, period. Imagine giving your clients a delightful experience and having a delightful time doing it. Learn how HubSpot can help your business grow better at HubSpot.com. You've heard the story a million times. I started my career with nothing more than a $300 camera from Craigslist and a dream. Well, that camera, it was a Nikon. And Nikon just introduced the perfect camera for you. Meet the Z30. It's packed with features you need to vlog or stream or create with ease. When paired with the creator's accessory kit, the Z30 comes with all of your greatest needs in mind, like a handheld grip, a tabletop tripod, a Bluetooth remote, on-camera microphone. They've got it all. The Nikon Z30 can help you get your work out into the world. This is the camera that creators have been waiting for. Get your Z30 today at NikonUSA.com slash gold digger. That's NikonUSA.com slash gold digger. There's this article by Entrepreneur and it shared seven ways to know if it's time for you to transition from an employee to an entrepreneur. And I think it's really awesome to listen to these seven things because if you're listening to this, maybe this episode has given you that piece of being like, yes, I am an excellent employee and being an employee fills my cup. And it helps protect my boundaries that are so important to me. And it gives me that safety and security that I need to move through life with the fullness of it. Or maybe you're listening to this and you're like, I'm an employee right now. And I'm thinking about taking the leap or I deeply desire becoming an entrepreneur. And I feel like these seven things are going to maybe help you distinguish which path is right for you. So first, I love this one. You are passionate about your work, but not your job. And I think this is huge because I think a lot of us take massive ownership in the work that we do. Like maybe we're making the results happen, but we don't get to reap the rewards of the results. That can be a tricky place to be in. And so maybe you're really passionate about your work and the way that you show up and the results that you drive, but maybe the job isn't right for you. That might be a sign that entrepreneurship is next for you. Maybe you are sick and tired of just thinking about it. I cannot tell you how many people I meet that when they find out what I do, or they find out that I'm an entrepreneur, or I teach about entrepreneurship, they tell me about what they're waiting for, or what they've been waiting on, or this idea they've sat on for years and years and years. And maybe you've just come to a point where you're like sick and tired of thinking about it or talking about it or dreaming about it. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Maybe you have this deep desire to help others. And Honestly, I think you can help others in both roles. In fact, I would argue like my team really allows us to make a bigger impact. There's a chapter in my book where it says like where one plus one equals a million. Whereas like all of our efforts combined help us to make a way deeper impact. But maybe you want to help others on a more personal level. Or you want to help others on a deeper level. Or you want to impact the world in a different way. And your current role as an employee is limiting what that looks like or how you can do that. Number four, and I love this one, is you have support. And I think this is so huge because there's so much talk in the entrepreneurial world about people being self-made. And honestly, I don't really subscribe that self-made is even a thing. You have to have help on the journey. And that help can look like totally different things. It could look like help at home with your children. It could look like help in the form of somebody who cooks or cleans or even like your Uber driver, like that is help. Or it can look like help in the form of a virtual assistant or contractors or team members. Like you have to have support. And that support can even just look like friends who are on this journey with you. But I think that making the leap from employee to entrepreneurship, you have to have support. You have to. You have to build out that support team. 
whether it's free or paid contractors or employees, help in the home or help in the business, you have to have support. Number five is you have a great idea. And I think this is huge because I was reading an article the other day just about this generation that is coming up and how so many people like aspire to become influencers. And, and I think there are good and bad things to that. But a lot of times, the idea itself isn't well formed. It's not something that will help you earn money, change lives, make a difference. It might not be something that's scalable. You have to have a great idea. It has to be well formed. And it was interesting when we were in Mexico, I was talking to my friends and I shared this story about something that was so cool that my mom did when I was growing up. And I just respect it so much more even as an adult. But when I was a kid, I would have these great ideas of what I wanted to do with my life. There was this season of life where I wanted to be a veterinarian. And, you know, whenever someone would ask, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would say, I want to be a veterinarian. And my mom had heard me say that for a while. I think I said it longer than a week straight. And so she went to the local vet in town and said, Hey, you know, my daughter has this passion and she thinks she wants to be a vet. Would you allow her to job shadow you for a day? And I honestly think I was probably like nine years old. And they said, yes. And I went in for a day and I job shadowed them. And I watched, I'll never forget. I watched a turtle get dissected. I watched a cat get fixed. And I watched like a bladder repair of an animal or something. And I remember after that day thinking, okay, I do not want to be a veterinarian anymore. I just want to snuggle dogs. Maybe I'll like do a dog rescue or something like that. Like it it was this interesting thing where what I had imagined a vet doing was very different from the reality of what the vet actually did. And then years later, I thought that I wanted to be a surgeon. Like when I went to college, I was pre-med. I was very set on this idea of being a surgeon. And so my mom asked a local surgeon, can Jenna job shadow you for a day? And I did that. And I watched gallbladder removals. I watched colonoscopies. And and I mean, it totally changed my perception of what the idea was that a surgeon would be. But it also formed and gave me this reality of like what that would be. And when I was in Mexico, I was talking to my friends and I said, you know, I really wish that for children, and I say children, I felt like an adult at the time, for people that are graduating high school and going on to college, and they have this idea of what they want to do. I wish that there was like this gap year, where you had to job shadow the role that you thought you wanted to play. Because even in my two days of job shadowing a vet and a surgeon, it changed my idea of what I wanted to do and what that would look like. And to this point, you have this great idea that is a great sign that it might be time for you to be an entrepreneur. But have you really examined the reality of what executing on that great idea would be? And I say this because even when I became a wedding photographer, and the title wedding photographer, you imagine, yeah, you're out there shooting photos every day. You know what? Shooting photos was like 2% of my job. The other 98% was trying to figure out how to code a website, sending emails, sending invoices, editing photos, blogging, copywriting, advertising, like all these other things. And I think a lot of times entrepreneurship is that you have this awesome idea. But if you don't thoughtfully think about all of the things that surround the idea that are required as an entrepreneur, that entrepreneurship might not be the right thing for you. And so I kind of went down a rabbit hole on that. But if you have this great idea, And you're super introspective and honest about like, okay, what other tasks would I need to do? What other hats would I need to wear in order to get this great idea from just being an idea to an actual sustainable, viable business? And you've thought of all those things and you're willing to play all those roles. Well, that would be a good sign that entrepreneurship might be for you. And if you haven't yet, I would challenge you to really try to get that backstage pass of what it would look like to execute on that idea. Chances are there is someone that might be doing what you want to do or doing something adjacent to it. And it would be interesting if we could all kind of do what my mom did for me in job shadow or get an honest look at like, what does it take? And am I willing to do that? Number six is you have a plan. And I'm going to share a little bit more about how I figured out my own plan in making the leap because I am not a huge risk taker. I really do crave safety and security first. And so having a plan is so huge. And the more entrepreneurs I meet, um, you know, as someone who was recently diagnosed with ADHD, I see a lot of entrepreneurs that also have that. 
it's so important for people that have a neurodivergent brain, but also just people that are like wildly passionate and risk takers to have a solid plan. Because a lot of times we are so passionate about the thing, but we forget again, all the work that surrounds that. And so having a plan can provide you that safety and security that you might be craving, but it also gives you the confidence to make that leap of faith. And then lastly, number seven, you also have a backup plan. And that's huge. I mean, you have to know that like, if this thing goes south, like, what does that look like? So again, here are the seven ways to know if it's time for you to transition from an employee to an entrepreneur. So one, you're passionate about your work, but not your job. Two, you're sick and tired of just thinking about it. Three, you want to help others. Four, you have support. Five, you have a great idea. Six, you have a plan. And seven, you also have a backup plan. You know, when I finally started to kind of make my plan and my backup plan around entrepreneurship, I was working 10 hour days and commuting almost an hour each way to work. So that's 12 hours a day. I was working on a retail schedule, but in a corporate setting. So it's a really interesting place to be. So I would work every other weekend. I worked one night a week, but I was also in that windowless office. So it was a really interesting reality, honestly. And it left really little energy and bandwidth to be working and growing that side hustle on the side. And I remember when I went to tell my parents like, Hey, I think I'm going to be an entrepreneur. You know, they were really surprised. I had just got done getting a degree in business administration. Like all of the visions I had painted for my future included more of a corporate setting, a corporate office. I had dreamed of working my way up and ending up in headquarters, moving back to the cities of Minnesota. Um, like that was the vision. That was what I had painted for a very long time. And so all of a sudden, you know, three years into this corporate gig, saying, I'm going to be a wedding photographer. I've never taken an art class. I've never taken a photography class. I just bought a camera. I think my parents were a little taken aback, right? Like they're so excited. Their daughter's like passionate and on fire about this thing, but also they're trepidatious and for good reason, right? Like I can only imagine as a parent, like, you know, my parents had no entrepreneurial examples and the only entrepreneurial examples they had didn't really go that well. And so this thought about like walking away from safety and security, which we first and foremost as family values craved, they asked a lot of questions. And so it was interesting because I remember kind of bringing it up and being like, Hey, I think I'm going to go for it. And I like prepared almost like a presentation and anticipated the questions they would ask. You know, they asked about like, what are you going to do for insurance? What are you going to do for a 401k? What does this look like for savings? If this doesn't work out, what's the plan? And I remember being able to answer their questions and, and it gave them confidence, but like they were still super hesitant. Like my parents are not shy to say like they weren't super stoked about this. But for me, it wasn't even so much as running towards entrepreneurship. I was running away from like what was no longer working for me. It was no longer my vision to spend my life in that way. It was no longer my vision to have somebody else plan my life for me. And so I was like hell bent on figuring it out. And so this one exercise, and I want to close with this because this one exercise absolutely unlocked so much for me. And so if you are listening to this and you're like, hey, like, I'm an employee, but I think I want to be an entrepreneur. But like, I don't know what that looks like. Please do this exercise. So for me, I was afraid, of course, I still am afraid to this day of certain things, but I was afraid of failure. I think that's normal. And I had to get really honest with myself on what would failure look like? Like, if I go for it, if I put in my two weeks notice, pack up my office and start working from my couch and becoming a wedding photographer, what would failure be? And for me, failure would be that, you know, I make this leap, I do the first year and then nobody books me or I totally mess up and I get a terrible reputation. And nobody wants to work with me again. And what I had done is while I was doing the side hustle, I built up the security to know I've got this whole first year planned out. I've matched my salary. I know that I can do this. I'm going to give it my go for one year. And if it's not for me, here's what I'll do. And, and failure to me was this. I said, if I absolutely fall on my face and can't make it work, 
failure would be, and this made it not scary at all. Failure would be updating my resume, leaning on the references that I'd worked so hard to earn, and going back into that corporate setting. And I imagine because I was an HR person, I imagine sitting in an interview and having somebody ask me, okay, tell me why your job history says you left this job. What did you do in the in between? And I imagine myself sitting there and saying, you know, I thought that I wanted to be an entrepreneur and I gave it my best shot and I tried super hard, but it wasn't for me. And I asked myself, is that really failure? No. Is that really scary? No. Do I trust that what has gotten me this far will help carry me forward? Yes. Do I believe that the gifts that served me really well in that corporate setting will carry forward? Absolutely. Oh, wow. Failure isn't so scary anymore. And so if you're listening to this and you're thinking about making the leap, I want for you to get really honest with yourself. What would failure look like? And then create an action plan around what you would do if that worst case scenario happened. And for me, when I did that, it released its grip. Like fear released its grip. And suddenly I was no longer afraid. I was excited. I was exhilarated. I trusted myself to figure it out just like I had figured everything out um, until that point. And what's incredible is I haven't really updated my resume in the last decade. I have never looked back. My entrepreneurial journey has moved and transitioned and shifted. The things I'm doing today, I never dreamt of when I first started. But there is something about the entrepreneurial spirit that is deep within me. And so maybe you're listening to this today and it's just affirmed that like you are the employee. You are more of the supporting role. You come alive in playing more behind the scenes. That is you. And if that's you, I want you to know you can have a full and vibrant and beautiful unlocked life. But maybe you're like me and you're like, I want to just run. I want to figure this out. I, I want to move as I want to. I want to make my own schedule. I want to be in control of my destiny. Then maybe entrepreneurship is for you. But regardless where you land today, I think the biggest message that I want for you to know, the thing that I got wrong in the years past that I never want to get wrong again, is that it is possible for you to live a life with your truth front and center. It is possible for you to live this enriched life in any role that you're playing. All you have to do is wake up to it. All you have to do is that as you are developing, you don't forget the person behind it. You get really honest with who you are and what you want for your life and what that can look like, maybe even just in this season, and you show up fully. I hope that today's episode inspired you. It is so good to be back at the mic. Not so good looking out at all the snow. But I am so grateful that I got to spend today with you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Gold Digger Podcast. And of course, until next time, keep on digging your biggest goals. And let me know. Chime in, slide into my DMs. Let me know which one are you, the employee or the entrepreneur. I'm super curious to know who's inside of my community. Thanks for listening to today's episode. I'll talk to you soon. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 